In this video, I'm going to walk you through a simple process for recording worship songs at home. First, I'm going to show you how you can capture high quality video and audio simultaneously using your smartphone and a digital audio workstation like Ableton Live. Next, I'm going to show you how to overlay lyrics of your worship song on your video file you captured with your phone so that your congregation will be able to sing along. Then I'm going to share a few tips for mixing your multi-track recording so it sounds professional. And finally, I'll show you how to combine your high quality audio and your video with lyrics together into one final product within a free video editing software like iMovie. So if you're looking for a simple and cost-effective workflow for recording worship songs at home to share with your church online, watch this video to the end. My name is Jake Goslin with churchfront.com, helping you lead gospel-centered and tech-savvy worship. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry. I also want to invite you to check out worshipministryschool.com where we have a library of online courses as well as a team of coaches who can come alongside you and give you step-by-step -step strategies for growing your ministry. Lately, many of the students who have been working with us in Worship Ministry School have been asking, Jake, how do I go about making a high-quality multi-track recording as well as combining that with video for our online church services? So I thought it would be beneficial in this video to unpack a theoretical workflow that if I only had my iPhone and a laptop, a simple audio interface to work with, this is what I would do. Because currently at Mission Lakewood Church, my workflow is a bit more involved. I'm using a lot more gear, a lot more software and automation, but I know for a lot of folks, it's just not realistic right now. So that's why I wanted to unpack this simpler, yet still high quality process. First, let's talk about all the gear and software you're gonna need in this workflow. I'm gonna link everything below this video. Fortunately, I think you'll find you already have most of this gear and software on hand, and if you don't, these are very budget-friendly solutions. The first thing you're going to want to have is your laptop, which is going to run all this audio and video editing software. Second, you're going to want a smartphone device that can capture high-quality audio, so one of the latest iPhones or Android devices will work just fine. Along with your smartphone, you're going to want some sort of tripod mount that your phone can be mounted onto a tripod, as well as a tripod itself, so that you don't have to have someone actually holding the phone, but you can just put it on the tripod, and it's going to be still and steady for recording. Next, you're going to want to have a simple two-channel at minimum audio interface so you can plug in your microphone and a guitar. Then you're going to want some sort of digital audio workstation or DAW, such as GarageBand, which is a free option, or you could use Ableton Live. Of course, you're also going to need all the cabling to connect your microphone and guitar into the audio interface. The next piece of software you should have is ProPresenter. I recommend the latest version of ProPresenter, ProPresenter 7. Then you're also going to need Ecamm Live. This is a great streaming software, but it also is going to be very handy in this pre-production process when we combine video with lyrics together. And then finally, make sure you have some sort of video editing software. It could be free like iMovie or it could be a paid version like Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro. Now that you have all the tools in place, let's talk about how this process works. So the first thing you need to do is record your worship set. I highly recommend prepping your three, four, five songs that you're going to want to sing on a given Sunday and recording them all at once. That's going to create the most efficient workflow. I like using the Filmic Pro app on my smartphone when I'm recording video because I can use manual exposure, but you can also just use the default camera app on your phone and that will work just fine as well. Make sure your microphone and your guitar are plugged into your audio interface. Make sure your computer sees your interface through the USB port. Open up your digital audio workstation like Ableton Live, and then you're going to be ready to go to start multi-track recording your vocals as well as your instrument into that DAW. And then next, you need to scroll below this YouTube video and then find that little thumbs up button and then press it so hard that it turns blue. It feels so feels good. good. It's definitely an added bonus if you can run your click and your backing tracks in your DAW like I did. I was able to pull some of the living room sessions that I purchased from multitracks.com into this Ableton project. Um, and then I used a simple headphone extension cable out of my audio interface so I could monitor my voice in my guitar as well as I could hear the click and guide cues for this song. So while it's definitely an added bonus to be able to use a click and tracks, it's not completely necessary for this workflow. So then when you're ready to go, hit record for both your video as well as your audio, and then play through your set list. 
at the end of this recording session, you're going to have a video file on your phone as well as the audio files in your DAW and you're going to be ready for post-production. The next step is just make sure all of your files are organized, whether it's on your computer's hard drive or an external hard drive. You'll see here I have a folder called assets where I have the raw iPhone video file. And then I also have my Ableton Live project right here. And then I have my Ableton Live project where I recorded my vocals and my guitar. And then you also have all the backing tracks going on here as well. And for the purposes of this video, I just recorded the first minute and a half of this song, but you'd want to apply this whole recording process to your whole set list. So the first thing I recommend doing in post-production is to grab the raw iPhone video file that you created when you recorded, and then go to Pro Presenter. And I would create a new media playlist. And let's Let's just call this music videos raw and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag in this file here into this playlist and then I'm gonna make sure this video file is gonna act like a background and then I'm also going to make sure that on playback here it just stops at the end so let's pretend that this is a video file of our entire worship set list that we just recorded then in pro presenter what i want to do is make sure i create some sort of playlist of all the songs that i recorded let's say if i did glorious day raise a hallelujah and Ten Thousand reasons i just want to lay out my playlist like i would for any other typical worship service the other thing that's going to be important to do is to apply a lower thirds theme to your lyrics so that when the lyrics come up they're going to be in the lower thirds of the video now watch what happens when i cue this song i'll go to the first slide here I'll cue the song. It's going to start outputting in Pro Presenter. And I can also use the transport controls here because I, I messed up uh, this first time. I forgot the first lyrics of the song. Um, so it was around here at 40 seconds or so. That's where I actually started singing the song. So now I can go to the first slide. You can see the lyrics on top of the video. I press play. And then I can just be a pro presenter operator and overlay the lyrics as the video plays. So you guys get the point by just dragging your raw video file into pro presenter now you can overlay lyrics on top of it and in pro presenter is going to output the combined raw video of you playing the song with the lower thirds lyrics but then we have to talk about how exactly do we want to go about recording this final video file there's multiple ways you could do this you could probably output your pro presenter feed to another screen on your computer and then use you know quicktime and screen recording to capture that but the easy way that i recommend doing it because i already have this tool is using e Cam live. So what I did in Pro Presenter is I went to screens, I went to configure screens, and then I made my congregation output an NDI output. So then Ecamm Live is going to detect that output from Pro Presenter, and then I can put Ecamm in record only mode. So then when I start playing back the song and cueing my lyrics, Ecamm is going to be able to record that final video file. So I'll show you guys how this will work. Let me just scrub back here. I'll go to the first slide of the song. And the watermark of ProPresenter shows up right now because I'm not using this computer for ProPresenter on Sunday. So it's not licensed. So on Ecamm, I'm going to press record. So that's starting to record a video file. And then I'm going to go back to ProPresenter. I'm going to play my background video. Now in Ecamm, I'm going to go finish recording, show video file, and now here's the video file. And now I have a video file which combines the footage of my iPhone with the lower thirds lyrics. But we're still not done yet. We don't have any audio in this video file. And that's one of the quirky things about sending your video output from ProPresenter to Ecamm Live is that, at least to my knowledge, when I messed around with this, you can't capture the audio in Ecamm Live. But that's not a big deal because we still have to mix down our audio in our DAW and then we're going to just manually sync it up in our video editing software at the end of this process but once that process is done with pro presenter and ecamm then i went ahead and saved this video file in my assets folder here and this is what we're going to be throwing into imovie later on the next step is to make sure you go to your daw and then mix down your multi-track recording so first i want you to listen to this recording with uh, no plugins on my voice and guitar uh, except for just this little gain plugin that i had so that you can at least hear them It was my 
now let's hear the plugins enabled and you'll notice I'm not putting that many complicated plugins on here uh, probably the most advanced is the waves real tune but it's a very affordable plugin really easy to use um, you'll see on my voice here I hit the wrench and you can see I just put it in the right uh, key of the song and it's good to go and maybe if you had multiple songs in a set list and you wanted to just bounce this all at once you could just put it into uh, chromatic mode um, and it'll just it won't be as good as putting it in the proper key uh, in the major key but it'll still work now let's listen to it with plugins Could carry that kind of way. it was my turn. out of the darkness into your so once I mixed down all of the audio the way I want it to sound, then I just selected the range here, Command Shift R and Ableton Live, and that's gonna allow me to export that into a final uh, bounced file. So then in my assets folder, I have this file mixed audio glorious day. So now we have our video file with lyrics and then our final mixed audio ready to be combined in our video editing software. But what I did is I opened up iMovie, just created a new project. I imported uh, the video with lyrics as well as my mixed audio, dragged them down on the timeline and then synced them up here just manually, uh, just using uh, site basically and looking at when I started singing the song and lined it up there. This process would have been easier if when I captured video in Ecamm uh, using NDI out of ProPresenter, it could at least have used my original iPhone audio, but it's still not that difficult, especially if you have one video file and one long audio file for your entire worship set list, you can just find one spot where it's really obvious to line it up and just go from there. Or you can also do the simple clapping trick when you record. Basically, when you, before you play anything, uh, get the camera and the audio rolling and then just go ahead and clap your hands on camera and then you're gonna see that spike in the audio uh, on your audio file down here and then you're gonna be able to match that with where your hands come together. So that's a simple way to sync it in post. So once that was done, I exported the video file from iMovie and then here it is. And I'll go ahead and give you guys a look and a listen at this footage. I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I try to hide. It was my turn till I met you. And you called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious state You called my name So there you have it. That is my theoretical workflow. If I only had my iPhone and a simple DAW and an interface to uh, capture some high quality recordings of our worship songs at home for our online church services. In reality, you probably will not and may or maybe cannot copy exactly everything I covered in this workflow, but hopefully it inspires you with certain tricks you can do when you start combining these pieces of software together. What questions do you have about producing worship music at home for your online church services? Let me know below in the comments of this video. And remember, check out worshipministryschool.com if you would like my team to come alongside you to help build out this type of solution for your ministry. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, smash that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos to help you grow yourself and grow your church.